In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the uh, concept of what a Venn diagram is. And on the second page, there's two pages to this tutorial, uh, a little bit about set notation or common notation with sets. Venn diagrams are a graphical way to organize groups of data, whether it's two groups or three groups or more. And in this first example, I'm going to show you with this information here how to draw a Venn diagram or how to represent this information in a Venn diagram. Now, Venn diagrams, to organize the data, you draw circles or ovals. And I suppose you could make them a little different, sh different shape, but they're generally circles or ovals. And uh, each of them represents a group of data. So if you're looking at any of this information here, we're talking about students that play in the basketball, volleyball, and golf team. So this uh, black one here is the basketball. Uh, the brownish-orange one is the volleyball. And the uh, this one would be the golf team. And you're told that there's 15 students that play in the school basketball team, 14 play in the school volleyball team, etc. And then you get into the ones that play on two different teams. So seven of these students play on both the basketball and volleyball. Uh, six play on volleyball and the golf. And then well, actually right down the bottom, at four students play on all three sports teams. When you're drawing a Venn diagram, it's very important to start from the middle and work your way out. So we would actually start from this uh, information at the bottom here, the, the people that play on all of the teams. So there's four students that play on all three sports teams. So I'll put a four in here. See, that's where all of the ovals overlap. So those four people are on the basketball team, volleyball team, and also on the golf team. Now, if we work our way up to the next one, it says five students play on both the basketball and the golf team. So basketball and golf would be this area right here. Now, I already have four people in there, and there's supposed to be five people in total here. So I'd only need to put a one here to make it a five people that play on both of those teams. Six play on the volleyball and the golf team. So volleyball and golf would be this region right here. I've already got four in there though. So if I want six in there total, I'd only need to put a two in there. So that's the six people that are on both the volleyball and the golf team. Seven play on basketball and volleyball. So I've already got four in this region, the, the volleyball and basketball overlap. So I'd only need to put a three in there. So that's the seven people that play in both of those. 10 play on the school golf team. So notice the golf, there's one and four is five and two more is seven. So I've already got seven people in the golf oval or on, on the golf team. I need 10 in total. So I only need to put a three in here. Uh, one, two, three, and four add to the 10. 14 play on the volleyball team. So notice that I've already got seven and two is nine. So I only need to put a five in here to give you in total all four of those uh, adding to the, the 14. And there's 15 students that are uh, on the school basketball team. Notice I've already got eight here. So three, four, and one add to eight. So I only need to put a seven there. So seven, three, four, and one add to 15. So that's how you draw an, or an example of how you draw a Venn diagram. And we have three questions we're going to answer about this Venn diagram and these students. How many students play exactly one sport? Well, the exactly one sport would be the people like these seven here. They're on the basketball team, but they're not in the volleyball team, and they're not in the golf team. So it would be those seven and these five. These five are just on the volleyball team. They don't play in the basketball team, and they don't play in the golf team. And then these three down here that just play golf. So we would just add up that five, three, and seven. And so there are 15 students that play exactly one sport. Now, the exactly two sports are where the... Uh, the the pairs of circle, or not circles, but ovals overlap. So these three people, this person here, and these two, not the four, the four is people that play on all three. So we would add up this one, two, and three. So there's only six students that play exactly two sports. And then how many students are, and the four, if you want to know how many play all, play all three, then, then that's the four there. Uh, the third question, how many students are represented in this information? And without the diagram, you might it might be uh, um, easy, or you might think, well, why don't we just add up all the numbers, 15, 14, 10, etc. And you can't do that because uh, in this 15, there's a whole bunch of students that are double counted or even triple counted, and the same with the 14 and 10, etc. So how many students are represented in this information? Well, this 7, this 1, this 4, this 3, this 5, 2, and 3. So we actually just add up these numbers. Those are all the people that either play one sport or play two sports or play all three. So if we add up those, we get 25. So there are only 25 students here altogether. 
On the uh, second page, uh, I'm going to talk about three common uh, symbols uh, that are used a lot when working with sets or groups of numbers or groups of objects. And the first one, it kind of looks like a capital U. It stands for union, and it means objects there that are in two or more sets, uh, all the objects combined. So, and we've got these two sets or three sets or whatever, all the objects in, in them all together. And the upside down symbol of that is called the intersection. It means the objects that are, are in common to all of the sets, that are in all of the sets. And then a kind of a sideways version of that is the, this, is the subset symbol. So it, it's used when a set is entirely included within another set. So I'm going to illustrate those with uh, the, the examples here in uh, number two. And uh, A is the counting numbers from 1 to 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. B are the evens, so 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And C are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. They're actually the prime numbers, but you don't really need to know what a prime is for this example. And in A here, we're asked to find the uh, union of B and C, so B union C. And it would be helpful to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate this. So there's the numbers in B, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And then here's C. Uh, C is a 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. Uh, notice that the 2 is in common to both. Okay, So that's why it's uh, in the region where the two ovals overlap. So the union of B and C would be all of these numbers. So they would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. It's actually everything but 9. So the union of B and C would be all of those numbers. The intersection, intersection means the objects that are in common to all sets. So in this case, the B and C sets. So 2 is the only object or number that's in common to both. So the intersection of B and C is just the number 2, because it's the only number that's in both of the sets. Last example, uh, we're supposed to uh, use these examples to illustrate what subset means. So I'm going to start with A here. It kind of looks like I've written all the uh, numbers in a, a weird order, uh, but they are all there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So all of A is there. And so notice that this is actually B, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So B is entirely included within A. So an example of a subset is B is a subset of A. Okay, let's get rid of the B down here. These are the uh, elements or numbers in C. It's 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. So C is another example that is a subset of A. So that's what subset means when a set is entirely included. Everything element in it is within some other set. And that's the end of the tutorial.